In this video, I'm going to show you how to flash a Slime VR tracker. To do this, you'll need to know some basic details about what kind of tracker you have and what's inside of it. I'm going to assume you already have this information. If you're not sure, refer to either who you bought the tracker from or your parts list if you made it yourself, or you can always jump into the Slime VR Discord server and show them your tracker and they can tell you more about it. Let's get started. First, we need to know which firmware version we're going to flash. There's some basic information at the top of the page here showing the rough differences between the different firmware branches. For the tracker I'm using, I'm going to be running Loud S Fusion. And the reason for this is that Loud S Fusion has currently the best BMI 270 support, which is the kind of IMU my tracker has. So I've selected that. The controller board I'm using is a D1 Mini. This is the most common type of board that most people will be using. Now we need to select what IMU setup we have. So firstly, if you're using auxiliary trackers, you will need to know which secondary IMU is in your auxiliary tracker. I'm not using any aux trackers on mine, so I'm going to switch this off. My primary IMU is a BMI 270. The rotation for my IMU is at 270 degrees. However, this doesn't actually matter because the Slime VR software, when you run an auto mount, will automatically figure this out, regardless of how it's flashed in the tracker. So you can ignore this field entirely. The battery sense settings can be left at their defaults unless the designer has otherwise specified. The Wi-Fi settings should also be ignored as you'll set this up in the Slime VR software later. Now we'll click Flash to Device, and we'll select the tracker from the drop-down list. If you have multiple options here, that means you have other serial devices connected to your computer. I personally recommend unplugging other serial devices while you're doing this just to reduce confusion, but in the vast majority of cases, you probably only have your tracker connected. If you run into errors while flashing, try unplugging and reconnecting the tracker. Also make sure that you're using an actual sync cable, not a charge only cable. You can also try plugging into a different USB port. You could also be experiencing a driver error due to the various chips that you can find on these D1 Minis. Reinstalling the Slime VR software will often fix this as it will reinstall the serial drivers. Now flashing is complete, we've got a blinking LED, which basically means that the tracker is not connected or just otherwise in an error state. This is fine, we're now going to connect it to our Wi-Fi network, and then it should be detected. In Slime VR, I'll go to the Setup Wizard, and I'll click through and enter in my Wi-Fi details. Slime VR will now look for any USB attached trackers and send those Wi-Fi details over. If Slime VR is struggling to find the tracker, just try unplugging it and plugging it back in again. Sometimes you need to restart the tracker after a firmware flash before it'll start responding properly. Now we can see that the tracker is detected, and if I just move the tracker, we can also see that we're getting a motion response from it as well. This is a good sign. I'm going to crash out of the setup wizard now, and on the home screen we can now see that we have a tracker. I can also click on it, and if I just do a your reset, we can now pick up the tracker and move it around and we can see that it is being detected and it's moving in the correct orientations. The last step we now need to go through is calibration. We're going to do the six side calibration. This applies to the BMI 160 and the BMI 270 trackers only. We'll put the tracker in calibration mode by turning it on while it's upside down and then flipping it over. After a sequence of LED flashes, we'll place it on each of its six faces, waiting for an LED flash between each move. You can repeat this process as many times as you like until you're satisfied. I suggest doing it in a dark room so the LED flashes are really easy to see, even with the tracker cover on. If you have access to a 3D printer, then you can print handy little jigs to make this easier. However, if nothing else, just find a nice bookcase with nice 90 degree angles 
that you can hold the tracker against. Before we do the calibration, you should preheat your trackers. And the easiest way to do this is just simply to switch them on and leave them wrapped up in a blanket or under a duvet or something like that for about half an hour. This should bring the temperature on them up to about 30 degrees, maybe low 30s. And that is approximately the kind of operating temperature you can expect to see when you're using them. Start face down and turned off. Turn on and wait for two seconds and then turn over. The LED should stay lit. Wait for a rapid flash, then a long flash, then another rapid flash. Next there will be a blink. Now move it to the next side. Wait for another blink, turn again, and so on. Once I've placed it face down for side 6, I usually just wait until the tracker reappears in Slime VR. That, that way you know that it's definitely saved the calibration data and is ready to go.